guys, welcome to Our Organic Life. My name's Tiffany. If you follow our vlog, you will know that we tilled our garden. It's a brand new garden bed. Um, well, we've used it previously, but we actually had added uh, soil up on top of it to raise it up a bit so that it wouldn't flood like it had last year. And so we tilled our garden. Tilling is a huge debate. There's a lot of people that say you need to till your garden. There's a lot of people saying that you don't need to till your garden. Well, I am one of those people that says that while I tilled my garden, you probably should not till your garden and I'm gonna tell you why. First, I'm gonna cover bases and I'm going to explain the situations in which tilling your garden may be necessary or beneficial. Now, for us particularly, whenever we raised our garden bed up, we actually raised it up with uh, soil from around our garden area. So there was a lot of sod in it. So it was really thick clumps of grass roots that I would not have been able to plant in. I could have tarped over it, but I would have had to wait months for that to break down before I could plant. So tilling for us personally made the most sense and it's gonna be the only time that we're gonna till our garden and I'm not tilling it anymore. So one of the circumstances in which tilling your garden may be necessary is if it is a brand new bed that you are putting into place. So say for instance, if like behind me, it's grass and it's never been dug up or used as a garden, that might be an instance in which you would want to till it, but I would suggest not tilling it again after that. But tilling it that one time and then covering it over with a silage tarp or wood chip, something to keep uh, the grass from growing back would be the most beneficial way to start your garden. The most common way that no-till uh, gardeners suggest though if you have grass like this um, which might which actually could be more beneficial but I understand that wanting to get started gardening uh, soon sometimes it's out of necessity so I personally I, I totally understand and agree yes get the ground tilled get it covered and get to planting but if you are not in that much of a hurry best way to prepare it is to lay down cardboard or compost and cover it over in a silage tarp and let it uh, cook and compost down. What's gonna happen is the grass, the grass roots, it's gonna break down, it's gonna feed the soil, it's gonna feed the natural microorganisms in the soil and you're gonna have really rich soil to start. That would be the best way, but I understand it takes time and sometimes you don't have time. So tilling would be, that would be a scenario where tilling would definitely be beneficial or a good time to use it. Another time that it might be beneficial is if it is a brand new garden bed, kind of going back to what I was saying where it's it's grass or if the soil, if it's been sitting vacant for a while and it's just very poor soil and you want to amend it, uh, if you bring in compost or good quality soil and you want to amend it, that would be the time where you could till that compost or soil into the native soil and improve and amend it. So that would definitely be another instance in which that would be beneficial or necessary. So I'm in front of my garden bed right now and you can see where I've laid down wood chips. I did not lay down a thick enough layer. I'm actually gonna be coming in here to plant soon. So what I'm gonna do is whenever I do that, I'm actually going to lay out my rows and as I'm laying down the plants, I'm going to re-mulch and add a heavier layer of mulch. But this, you can, you can see all the grass and the weeds that have come in. That actually is my first point of why you shouldn't till your garden. When you till your garden in soil way down deep where the sun can't reach, there's countless dormant seeds from weeds or grasses or things like that that have been laying dormant and once you expose them to sun, they pop up. So this is what you get, unless you can lay down a thick enough, uh, like a silage tarp or thick enough amounts of mulch to block those from sprouting, this is what you're gonna get. And this is what I'm battling right now, which I expected it, I planned for it. Um, it's okay, I can deal with this, but for people who till but don't mulch or don't put any kind of cover, as Justin Rhodes says, mother nature is modest. If you don't cover her with something, she'll cover herself. 
So typically oftentimes for those who garden and don't use any kind of wood chips or silage tarps, you're gonna get overrun with weeds. Every time you till, it's going to happen. One of the biggest arguments against tilling is that it can be very damaging or destructive to your garden actually. And one of the ways that it can be damaging is that you might actually kill or destroy some of the beneficial insects living in your soil, such as the worms. Whenever you're tilling down, you could, you could kill them. So that's another reason why tilling may not be the best thing for your garden. We all know that there are beneficial microorganisms living in the soil um, of your garden, and that's those beneficial organisms not only feed the soil, but also help in the uptake of nutrients for your plants. Um, the fungi, all of that, I'm not pronouncing it. I think, I think people sometimes pronounce it fungi. I've always pronounced it fungi, so don't come at me in the comments. But whenever you till up, you're exposing that soil to the air, to the sun, and if you're not, once again, if you're not covering it, it tends to dry out, killing a lot of those beneficial microorganisms. So you are essentially, in a sense, killing the soil. So once again, another reason. Now if you're tilling, I would not till more than once a year. Personally, I know a lot of farmers suggest you till twice a year, but you are going to deplete your soil of the living, of, of the life in your soil that benefits your plants ultimately. So in garden soil, there is a network, and a lot of people don't know about this, but there is a fungal network of uh, mycorrhizals, I think is how it's pronounced. But these fungus, and it's like the mushrooms that pop up in your garden, and a lot of people in the gardening groups always come in and say, oh my goodness, there's mushrooms in my garden. What do I do? How to get rid of them? You don't want to get rid of them because the, there is beneficial fungi in your garden. And if fungus is appearing in your garden, that means your soil is healthy. And there is networks in your soil, as I was saying, fungal networks. And those fungal networks help aid in decomposition, breaking down of organic matter to feed the soil, as well as your plants. And the better your fungal network is in your soil, the better uh, rate of uptake of nutrients your plants are gonna be able to get, which means healthier, larger plants, which means a much larger harvest and more food for your family. So, okay, Tiffany, you're telling me that I can't till my garden. What do I do then? So as I was saying in the beginning, the best thing for your garden that you could possibly do is to keep adding organic matter. And one way to do that, instead of tilling your soil, is to, you can aerate it. If, you, if your soil is compacted, you don't want to till, you've decided that's what you don't want to do, but you still need to aerate it for certain crops like root vegetables. What you can do is you can get what is called a broad fork, where you it stabs into the ground, and you just gently lift the soil and it is not as invasive or damaging to the soil structure as tilling is. Another way that you can continue to improve your soil if you don't want to till is keep adding organic matter on top and one of the best ways that you can do that is adding straw or wood chips. Now I'm not saying mulch from like Lowe's that is treated I mean, if you're rolling in money and you wanna go get cypress mulch, be my guest. But if you go to your local arborist and you reach out to them, they have to dispose of wood chips. And wood chips are the entire tree or plant chipped up, basically. So you've got the leaves, the bark, the wood, everything. And it will decompose over time over your garden, continuously feeding that soil, retaining moisture so that the soil stays moist and the microorganisms can thrive. So not hating on tilling. There are people who till and they have a lot of success and I commend them and I think that's awesome. But for me personally, I don't think tilling is for me. We are trying to follow regenerative practices. We're not trying to kill our soil. We want, we want to be able to grow in this garden bed for many, many seasons and utilizing these practices will make it so that is possible. So I hope that this helps. If you guys have any questions or anything to add, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear more things or more ways that you can uh, better improve your garden without tilling. Uh, I'm, I'm always learning, so I'd love to learn from you guys as well and maybe I can pass that information along. So thank you so much for stopping in.